Say. Work for a weak block though. Just want to name all the stuff around. You need a nigga like me in that shit, man. <laughs> um, sick. What's your name, bro? Jeez, man. Ain't no way. He say I don't. We on East Warren with this shit, my nigga, Lil P, man. Real Warren, nigga, man. They're holding it down for years, putting the Warren on, man. What's up, my boy? How you feeling today, bro? So what we on today, man? You about to show us, show us your stumping grounds, man. Show them where it's really going on at. Yeah, just getting prepared for this social season, about to drop. Okay, I just okay. Feel like I need to um, touch my phone, you know who I am, my side of the news. So I don't really get too much to hear me talk about shit. You know what I'm saying? Just getting them in debt with me. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm from, what I'm about, why I'm the way I am. You know what I'm saying? Right. So just 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 for the people who don't know or may be new fans, bro, where are you from? Let them know where we at, like right now, bro. We from East Warren. Just Warren up <laughs> Mac down. We on Warren right now. We on Ultra Road. We in between Mac and Warren right now. This the dead zone. So how would you describe growing up over here, bro? Growing up on Warren. This shit was fun though, for real. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it was fun as fuck. You know, you had to be on your shit though. You couldn't be no hoe around here. But for the most part, going around here was just like any other, any other neighborhood kids. Having fun. We used to play basketball all motherfucking night. Fucking girls and shit. Shit like that. We ain't had no parks. <laughs> we had park for a minute. We had like one rep. That bitch was like nine feet. And they tore that bitch down. We played the blocks and shit like that. Then we got older. Then we got older niggas clicked up. Shit like that. And then niggas dispersed around the, around the whole east side. So, um, growing up, I know being on Warren, did you used to be at East at Skate Land a lot? I ain't gonna lie, I really want no skate nigga like that. I ain't gonna cap. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> no, that shit was really blind. Like, uh, I, see, I ain't want no skate nigga like that. See, y'all older now. See, y'all older. That bitch used to jump, that though. Skate that bitch used to jump, though, for yeah, sure. That's, that's, that's for sure the mecca of the hood. But I really want no skater like that, though. that bitch. Ooh, cool. So, like, letting them get to know you, so, like, What's what's some things about Lil P that a lot of people don't know that like you feel like if they're a real fan they should know or you know what I'm saying? Something that's just important about you that you could connect with your fans with. Um I'm super competitive. Competitive as hell. I don't know man. I don't know for real. Probably gotta ask my niggas that for real, bro. But uh, I mean, probably what you see is what you get. But right. I'm right. Saying I'm competitive. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm loyal. I'm really into what I'm, what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm honest about shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just solid. I'm stand up, nigga. Right. I can agree with that. I'm you are always been a real one with me. We been skating. We gonna, we gonna give you the legendary story of the one. How this shit really started, man. Anything you wanna ask a nigga like me, let's kill Shoot, well what what should we know about the war? Who the who the real legends on the war? Man, you got a lot of legends. You got a lot of get money niggas. You got a lot of niggas who who first started hitting the licks. You got a lot of niggas who first started making the pill shit popular on the war, you feel me? Niggas know who they is. I ain't gotta say I ain't gonna be name dropping on this bitch. Right. Niggas who know, they know. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Boy, P come out the house crispy as hell, man. <laughs> I'm sick. The fit check going on, I'm sick. Oh, no, we good, man. Steps I failed on the bitches like two weeks ago. I ain't gonna cap. I'm sick. So P, you've been working on music. So, what's some uh stuff we could look forward to on the new tape? Much G shit. Like um. G shit, much raw shit. I got a few features on there, but these niggas, man, can't clear 
verses, man. It'd be hard to get features now. Man. But I guess I got a few, few features on that bitch. What's uh, some of the producers you've been working with? Um, Meech, um, who else? So for the most part, man, it'd be a lot of motherfuckers sending me beats, bro. Lately, lately, I've been getting a lot of people sending me beats. And I've been rocking out to them bitches. I'm gonna listen, I just listen to them. But my favorite producers is Meech from Prince. And Beats. I got music, I got beats from them, Lil Ron. And, and like, what's the vibe of this tape? Is it like some chill shit, some grown shit? Some gangster some shit. Gangster shit. Some gangster shit. Some G shit. Some G shit, just, just what I've been going through these past few years. Yeah, I guess putting down on wax. Great. So what, what's, What's some of your most memorable moments on Corville, bro? I used to chill with her all day, all day, bro. All day and night, that's all I did. Play basketball and chill with my little girl. Niggas used to be calling you a cake and shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, pretty boy, pretty boy ass nigga. But I was thumping shit though, so. Right. That's all, that, that was, that's all I did on Corville, we used to Motherfucking people all day and night. I'll be outside all night with my girl. We be walking around, walking around looking at the house. Cause you know you walk down all the drive. It's big, it's big houses, it's nice houses all through this bitch. Hell yeah. We walk through the houses, we walk past houses. Oh, it's gonna be our house, we have a family and shit like that. So would you say being on the warren motivated you to start making music? Uh, nah. Or you being, being around people motivated me to start doing music for real. Like, being with bro. That's what really motivated me to start doing music. Being on warren really shit. I don't know, it's just my life over here. It's just this shit like home to a nigga like. Warren didn't really motivate me to do shit. So Warren, this bitch getting money. Warren breed hustlers. That's a fact. So I know a lot of times um, in your music, I know you always give shout outs to Flav. But people who don't know Flav, can you break that down? Like who is Flav? What was the impact he had on you or the Warren in general? Flay was like one of my friends growing up. We went to school together from shit. Fifth grade all the way up to high school. When we got older, you know, that's when he started becoming like an icon in the, in the hood and in the city and the streets. So he me, she he me everything to warm. To me, that's 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 one of my closest homeboys that I lost though, you know what I'm saying? He passed away and shit. But he for sure motherfucking legend. His impact on me. He was motivating us to do this shit when we first started. That's why you heard niggas saying his name a lot from, from the top. You go back to the beginning of the shit when we first started dropping CDs and shit. Cause he was one of the niggas pushing that shit, pushing us to go and do that shit. Facts. So, being on the warrant, I'm pretty sure you went to Finney. So, going to Finney, what was that like? Because at that time, it was a lot of shit going on up in Finney, man. A, a lot of different people, all type of shit. Finney, man, Finney was motherfucking, was Warren, man. Like, you was from Warren, you pretty much went to Finney. You might have tried to go to SC, then you motherfucking your ass back to Finney. Shit, Finney was wild as hell, bro. It was fun too though, like that shit that shit was fun. That shit was fun as hell. Wow that shit went on there, nigga died in that bitch. When we went in that when I went to high school, nigga died in that bitch. We got kicked out, me and little Greg, we got kicked out of that bitch. We basically got expelled out that bitch our 12 game year. For that fight. 
ain't do this shit, though, but that shit fucked me up. I ain't go to prime or none of that shit. Oh, shit. We went to Clinton <laughs> Fitting was everything in the basketball games, nigga. The bitches be so hype. That shit used to be everything back then. That's hype. Oh, this shit live right now? Hell yeah. Man, I ain't even looking like God. Damn, yeah. man, y'all boys can't make us out here and shit like that. I don't got the roll over you, feel me? We in the hood, oh, right? That's the perfect time. You got the bag in, though, type shit. Are you tripping? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Real bar and boy, y'all catch us out here in the trenches all day, nonstop. With that bag in, too. Hold up. I don't need no kind of video this series. Right. Put it like that. Come fuck with us, man. I'm G Gelato. Gelato G. Type in with me. You heard me? Okay. Come on, nigga. Pee in. Ain't not up with you. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't mind. I'm walking in. She ain't watching the TV. I don't know. 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 Take a piss real quick, but this is my old crib. This is where I started at, right here, man. On the war, um, the was right here. We had, I had a back porch, it was all glass, windows all around that bitch, though. And I had a big ass glass mirror, my shit was straight. I had a nice ass room, that bitch, jacuzzi, little tub in that bitch. I thought I was sweet as hell. We was young as hell, I was right, like, I think I moved here when I was like 10. Right, so how did you start rapping, bro? Like, where exactly? If if it was a specific spot, like how? Did, well, fuck that. How did you get into rapping, bro? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. When we was younger, like we used to like race CDs. Me and my nigga Lil G, my nigga Troy, we was just buy CDs. We used to listen to everything. I never really thought about rapping for real, for real. We was just writing music, like, <clears throat> listen to everybody's CDs, but, oh, yeah, that bitch, like, 90% good, lyrical, and we used to break beats. We used to just break the bitch down, I ain't gonna lie. So then I started, um, kicking it with bro, so peasy and shit. And at first, he ain't really want to let a nigga know he was rapping and shit. So then I started hearing him on shit. And I was like, damn, bro, that shit sound hard, man. You know what I'm saying? And then... He like, shit, yeah, you like that shit? I'm like, yeah. So I started going to studios with him, seeing him rap. And that shit motivated me to rap. And then my nigga Trap, he has a studio. He has some studio equipment and shit like that. And we just fucking around with it one day. I think we was around like, what, 17, 18, something like that. And we had just did some shit off of Jeezy beat. What beat? I forget what beat it was. Probably Trap or Die, I think it was Trap or Die. Did some shit to that motherfucker. Style and shit, but that shit was straight though, and that shit got me to rap it. And then I wrote my solo song off the um, let me get him to shoot the soldier boy. And now I rapped it to peas and shit. And he price gas, and he like, That shit hard, bro. We go drop that shit. I'm like, I like, all right, bet. He like, I'm gonna throw it on my mixtape. So I'm like, all right, bet. I went and dropped the bitch. He put it on there too, though. It was called Crunch the Bricks. It was just like a little mixtape niggas had floating around the uh, hood. This would be the end though. It's those three blocks. Three days and shit, bro. On that time, right? Like a little after that. And I, um, I brought Dane Ryan. Dane the PZ. Because I 
because I feel like they ain't had the sound that niggas were looking for that we needed. You feel me? Oh, and then my baby, man, he hard as hell, bro. He got the sound. So we ended up going to Dave's studio, doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? We had Dave's Low with us around that time, too. Dave's Low was with us. Me, Lil G used to be with us. My nigga Troy. Sandy was around, too. Babyface was doing his own thing, for real. This was, like, right before we was TV stuff and shit. Right, like... We all, we all used to meet up and shit and start doing songs at the 88 studio. Kind of, like, went away. I don't know if he moved or not. <laughs> Niggas was doing their own shit, but... We'd still meet up and, like, do group songs or just, like, on some kicking and shit, hanging out and shit. Until, like, I say... 2010, 2011, Twitter shit started popping and shit like that. Um, Babyface that dropped the East Side with the real money at with Reek. Hashtag Team East Side, boom. That's, Twitter gave us our name, you feel me? <clears throat> so after that, when we finally got a name, because we was working for so long, we ain't had no name, you know what I'm saying? We got the name, we started putting the songs together. Now we got all these songs we've been doing. Certain niggas came off some songs, I ain't gonna lie. On that first album, a couple niggas came off some songs, redid some shit, and we put that shit out. The first CD we dropped, it really wasn't, like we ain't put no, no push behind it, and we had that bitch on a blank CD. Team me side, we here, we took it to press play. Press play was like some shit you go, sell your CDs at in the middle of the mall type shit, you feel me? So we took our shit to Northland on the west side. We're like, man, they, we don't even want no money for the shit. They come asking for it, just give it to them. On the east side, we did the same thing. Shit got the buzz, shit got the buzz. Then we start working on Welcome to Our Side. By this time, we locked in. We, we all locked in on the music Watch now. Us. expect that bitch to, you know what I'm saying we we knew we we that's what we wanted but we ain't know that you know what I'm saying so that shit hit us so now we going we don't really know our worth for real we didn't really know our worth when we first started you know what I'm saying we ain't know what to charge niggas and no shit like that we ain't had no guidance on that shit you know what I'm saying this is before this is really before all that streaming and all that shit really got to popping so we had put a nigga in position to be our manager. We thought it was our mans and niggas. Stealing our money. We had made a bank account. Put money up. Or we thought niggas was putting money up. Niggas was tricking with hoes. Renting out icewear magnum and shit. Take hoes to Benny Hanna's and all type of shit. trust I feel like with the crew like niggas ain't want to put no money up then niggas want to I, I need my shit I, you feel me type shit right. so, that shit kind of changed shit then I had to like kind of like take a back seat to rapping them like book shows and be a manager type for the group so that shit was crazy at the time so then after we got through all that you know what I'm saying niggas got the pop in and Sololi and shit, niggas got to individually get names and shit. I eventually had to um start doing my solo shit. I dropped Last of a Die Breed. That was my first mixtape. That was my first mixtape that I dropped and shit. 
and some Apple Music and all that. But it pretty was pretty much like my first body of work that I put together that I could say I put my all into. I really ain't had too much money like that either to get that shit mixed and mastered and none of that shit. I just put that shit out like, yeah. <laughs> but shit, man. I'm sick. That's interesting. So, like, you say you feel like the person that was getting down fucked up the vibes of the whole group shit. Yeah, I mean, that shit old now, you feel me? It really ain't shit. It's just, back then, back then it did, though. Because it was like, all right, if that nigga did it, that shit, who? How, you feel me? Another nigga gonna do it. You feel me? Right. And if, if, it's, if this a nigga that we feel like our man's like that and he did it, so now it's like, all right, the next nigga for sure gonna do it or that's what a nigga thinking gonna happen. Like I said, niggas ain't really, we didn't really know our worth. We didn't, we weren't thinking about none of that shit. We felt like everybody was trying to get a piece. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that shit kind of put a dapper in and I had to step up and like, like all right, well, I'll do that. Feel me? I, I book the shows and, you know what I'm saying, talk to people and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, just so you will not have to bring nobody in that we have to put that trust into again. Y'all make the songs, y'all blowing up now. Uh, well, y'all getting more recognition, let's just say it like that. Y'all getting more recognition than y'all expected. So, now y'all booking shows and... Like when y'all was like, how many shows did y'all say y'all was doing at peak when y'all was just slapping, slapping? Shit, we had a show every weekend, for sure, for sure, for sure. Back then, it wasn't too many niggas rapping. It was only us and the dope boys. So shit, we had a show. We had a show every weekend, for sure. If it went, if we ain't had shows like in between the days, we had at least four shows a month. The show every Saturday, probably some Saturday and Sunday, probably some Friday, Saturday, but we at least had four shows a month. And where would you say y'all was doing most of y'all shows at? Like at normal clubs, strip clubs? We did a lot of shit in the strip club. We did a lot of um, we did a lot of regular clubs too. We did halls. We did a lot of halls, like um, sixteen, sweet sixteen parties and shit. We did a lot of them. Yeah, we did a lot of parties like that, graduation parties. We did shit like that. The strip club, <clears throat> that shit really would, would catapult the niggas because that's where they was playing our music at the most. So, we probably did majority of our shows in the strip club. Deja Vu. Deja Vu was a hot spot for us, R.P. Drew. That nigga booked us all the motherfucking time. Let's fuck it hell. Fucking hand on the corner right here. Troy Beasley right down there. Very corner, man. Looking on this bitch. Every day. Every day and night. Say this. So, uh, yeah. With the uh, well, I was asking like, where was y'all doing shows at? And you were saying oh, yeah, the strip yeah, club. Deja vu, deja vu, we did a lot of shit there. Double um, O Seven, that shit really, that really was the mecca of this shit. Like, you feel me? That's where this shit really took off. That's where we really had all our fun at. We really did all our shows at for real in the beginning stages. Double O Seven, deja vu. And for a lot of the younger people, they probably have no clue what 007 is, bro. Right. Can that's you explain 007 to them, man? You ride past all the driving, seven mile, that shit right there on. That's 00. But 00, that shit, everything. Nigga, jump on stage and do the flag. That's where that shit. That's where that shit was made at. That's where you go make a name for yourself. And you, if you say you was that nigga back then. 
And you had to go in that bitch. If they ain't talking about you in there, you ain't really, you ain't, you ain't talking about shit. You ain't hitting no shit, you know what I'm saying? And we read that bitch. We read that bitch. We just said, this bitch will argue about Lil Wayne. What fuck you talking about? Kobe Bryant and shit like that. <laughs> This is where it all started at though, man. On the stoop. Well, doing that at that time when y'all blowing up the strip club, showing love, y'all getting the name, at what point did it just was like, all right, y'all, y'all couldn't be denied no more. Like nigga, y'all was here to stay pretty much. Like what song would you say put y'all like, all right, yeah, it's up, or was it the whole album? It probably was Welcome to our side. It probably was the whole album. It was just every song on that bitch. But um, an EV chick probably was our biggest song to this date. But back then, all that shit was a slap. <clears throat> I know motherfuckers to this day tell me they listen. Just, they listen to Team Me, so I tear still every day. To this day, they still listen to our old shit. All right, cool, Joe. <laughs> I'm sick. So who who uh produced slapping? Who who produced needy chick? Oh, dang, dang, dang. I would have never knew they that. Ain't made the beat. They ain't made that motherfucker. They ain't made that beat on that motherfucker. Oh, they ain't made that Niggas, it, it wasn't really, it wasn't, like I say, nigga, it wasn't too many niggas really doing shit. Bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Who that? Nobody. Just one. Nothing. Yeah, shit, dang. Hard ass, hard ass. Hard as fuck on the beat, Dr. Dre. So... Y'all made welcome to our side. It's taking off. You know, you know what song did it? Power, man. It's power. power. Yeah. That was a hit for sure. Had to do part two of this motherfucker, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, sick. Cause this is really interesting. So power, power made, and on that song, that's like. I feel like power was the song that did it. That stamp, stamp team, stampers. That team east side. That's what gave us the respect for real. Niggas knew we was hard, but when we dropped that bitch, it was like, yeah, yeah, bow down to them niggas. Them niggas, them niggas ain't nothing to play with. Like think twice before you speak on them niggas, man. So at that point, power going crazy. So at that point, power, y'all bringing more people from the east side into the music scene pretty much essentially with with like y'all grow naturally people that y'all know that rap is like coming around well not coming around but y'all already the team east side that everybody looking for so everybody music popping now uh, pretty much right so it's like would you say a lot of the rappers that's popping right now Essentially came through like Team Eastside. Well, I say we, I say we the, um, we the top dogs for sure. We, we made, we the stamp of this shit. Like we, we made the wave for rap, for the Detroit rap. So we made it to where a nigga know how to come on the track. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like right. nigga learn how to rap listening to us. I feel like. Not to take nothing away from niggas, cause niggas hard as hell. But yeah, I feel like every every Detroit rapper got a little bit of peasy in them, or a little bit of baby face, a little bit of dang. You know what I'm saying? Because it was the niggas that everybody grew up listening to. So how could you not though? You know what I'm saying? I know I saw, I know I, I know I know I listen to the niggas that I grew up to, and I try to mock they shit a little bit, or try to be just as good as them. So, yeah, hell yeah. yeah, yeah. Team East Side was the first to paint the picture of the East Side, man. To show you, tell you what's really going on around this bitch.
Everybody follow that. Yeah, it's like, you know you on the hood, you see some crocs on the ground. <laughs> Come on, man. Down too. Look at that bitch. <laughs> that shit made everybody want to drink me. Yeah, not the same. Damn, say I'm a. It's made in the new drugs. Made niggas want to get money too. Made niggas want to hit the road. For sure. Made niggas get some money, man. Really, first niggas rapping about the road. For real, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like in this era. But we got our swag from the Cheddar Boy, the Street Lord. I feel like our beats just fast. Our shit just is a little bit more saucier. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like Kobe, a little bit more saucier than Jordan, but it's, you know it's just, just how it go. You trying to start a great debate with that I'm shit? Just saying, this is the truth. So, what's your favorite Team Eastside song, bro? That's hard. I don't know. I ain't got one. I ain't got one, man. Uh, oh. I ain't got one. Uh, I can't even tell you. Right, that's I fair. Would, I would say power, because all damn near all of us on it, but I don't know. Oh. Probably La Familia. Probably my favorite right, how did that come about? Was that like everybody was at the studio? Cause that I say for real, that was the first time I heard a lot of y'all on the same song in a minute. Yeah, it was like that shit, it was two parts to that to that to that song. That bitch really was finished and then Peasy heard that bitch, oh I gotta get on this bitch. But it was me the original the original just had, it didn't have PZ and Snoop or D-Nice on it. It ended, I believe, with 88 on one of them. And then we brought the beat back for PZ and Snoop and D-Nice. And they ended that bitch up. So that bitch, that bitch really was finished. And then niggas went back in and finished that bitch again type shit. Like, oh yeah, we got to get on that bitch. That bitch too hard. I like slapping too, slapping, slapping the class. I say, um, I can't think of the song. I think it was the outro on We Here with you, Ray, Dame, and Peasy. That freestyle. Oh, you saw uh, Louis Bell, my 240s? Yeah, bro. <laughs> that That's one of them ones right there, man. For sure. Yeah, that bitch a classic. That bitch, that bitch a classic for sure. That bitch was so classic. Ball and get balled on. Yeah. Ball and get balled on. What's the shit? All that shit classic though. Yeah, ain't no bitch. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I ain't got no bitch. There's too many of them, man. There's too many of them to name. The catalog too goddamn long, man. You feel me? All that shit. Street inspiration, man. Quality street music. Say we in the trenches, man. This bitch quiet now. Nah, ain't shit going on. Everybody old now. Nah. Say that's cool though, niggas. <laughs> niggas done lived the oh. hell of a life. The dog way he got past us got the tripping. That's how you know you ain't crazy, ain't for, crazy real. for real. Nigga <laughs> ain't about that shit, man. He talk, who the fuck you talking to? He talking to us too, probably. He probably. He talking to us in his head too. <laughs> Young ass niggas, ah! Uh, uh, fuck one of y'all niggas, ah! Uh. I'm sick. It's <laughs> it's crazy, like hearing those stories from your perspective. Right. Like that shit just make my mind wonder. That shit sounds sweet though. Like at that point, coming up in the music game, y'all niggas was low key turned. And, and yeah, just humble with it. We was really superstars, bro. We just ain't had no money. 
we were superstars before this yeah, shit was really, was you know what I'm saying? Like, so a lot of this shit, we seen this shit already. It don't excite a nigga no more. It's not, it don't excite, it don't excite me no more like that. It kind of fucked my social life up too, because it made me like, I don't know, kind of guarded. So a nigga ain't really go out as much. Like, unless I was getting paid. You know what I'm saying? So now I really don't like going out. If I, if I ain't paying me, uh, hell no, I ain't going to that club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But a nigga be having to break out of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I like to work, though. I just like to be in the studio. That shit just made me a work, a workaholic, man.